Hey everyone, it's that math magician. On this video, we're gonna take a look at our final review for our geometry class. We are working through a worksheet for many problems over the course of geometry. You can find the link to that PDF in the description below. But we're gonna jump now into this PDF and we're gonna focus in on problem number two. We have for each figure below, determine if the two smaller triangles in each figure are congruent using a two column proof then solve for x. If the triangles are not congruent, then explain why not. It looks like we will not be able to solve for x unless these guys are congruent triangles. So that's our first step that we gotta do. And we're gonna look here at problem A here. And it says to make a two column proof to show that they are congruent. So I'm gonna start off with setting up my two column proof. We're gonna have statements, and then we're gonna have reasons. And we're gonna have to figure out, are these guys congruent or not? So let's look at what we know. Hmm, I can see already that this right triangle has a side or a leg that's 40. I see this guy also has a side or a leg that is 40. So that is good to know already. I can already say that when I take 40 and I divide by 40, that's going to equal one. What I'm showing in that two column proof is that they have a zoom factor of one. What's the reason here? Well, it's just given to us. It's given that 40 over 40 is gonna be one. Those sides are given. We know those lengths. They have at least one matching side length. So this is good already. I know one side is already equal. And I know some of y'all might be thinking, maybe we could do side angle side here, right? We know they both got the 90. We know they're both 90 degrees. Um, for the right triangle here. Maybe, maybe side angle side is what we want to use. But I really don't want to use side angle side. I actually want to use a different one. And I want to use hypotenuse leg. Hypotenuse leg is one that we don't use that often. But when I have two right triangles, and I'm trying to show are they congruent or not, hypotenuse leg works really well. And if I look at this, I already have my two legs here for hypotenuse leg. Those are the two legs. I really just need to see now do they have a matching hypotenuse? And well, look here, there's the hypotenuse of 41. If I can show or prove that this angle here, this angle, this side is also 41, then I'm gonna be good. This is gonna work out. I'm gonna know that these two hypotenuse are going to be equal. And then that's enough to show that they are in fact congruent triangles. So let's see. Are they congruent? Well, I'm gonna label this side over here C, and I'm gonna do Pythagorean's theorem really quickly, because Pythagorean's theorem is gonna show me what that missing side C is. So I'm gonna do C squared, is gonna equal nine squared plus 40 squared. Alrighty, well, C squared, nine squared is 81. Four, 40 squared, I might have to get the calculator out for that one. 40 squared is gonna give us, whoops, get out of here, Mr. Keyboard, there we go, 1600. Okay, well, 81 plus 1,600 would be 1,681. I really just need to get the square root of that now. And the square root of 1,681 is going to give us, what do you know, 41. I know that that missing side there, this missing length of C, is 41, which then tells me that for my two-column proof over here, 41 over 41 is going to to equal one. How did I get that? Well, I had to use Pythagorean's theorem. That's one of the things I had to use, Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, that is what helped me. Whoops, I can't spell today. Pythagorean's theorem is what showed me that those that missing side was 41. And then 41 over 41, that's gonna equal one. That gives me two congruent sides, which now means that I can say that these two triangles are congruent. We have congruent triangles. What's the reason? Well, we're using hypotenuse leg congruency. That is what we're using for that. My, uh, my uh, two column proof's a little longer than I needed it to be. There we go. That right there has proven that these two triangles, they are congruent. I know that for a fact now because they have a matching side of 40. They also have a matching side of 41. I didn't really find it, but if you think about this, let me erase some of those lines there. Think about this. 
I know that these both sides are also 41. That also is going to tell me that this side here, that's also going to be 9. If I did Pythagorean's theorem for that triangle, that side would also be 9. And that's actually leading me into the last part of this problem. It wants us to find this distance here of x. Well, I know that that whole hypotenuse is 41, right? I know that whole thing is 41. So that means when I'm setting up a little problem now to solve for x, I know that x plus 9 has to equal the 41. If I want to know what x is, I just got to subtract 9 on both sides. And what is 41 take away 9? Well, x is going to be 32. And that's it. We've now solved this problem here for a. It's a little weirder than we're used to seeing, right? And it, when you look at it, it's not even that much work. But what we first got to do is figure out, are they congruent? Figure out what you want to use. We decided to use Pythagorean's theorem here. So that worked out really well for us. Once I knew that they were congruent, I can solve for that missing side x. Alrighty, let's go ahead and try this guy over here now. B has two triangles in there, and I'm seeing some equal angles, some equal sides. We got to figure out, are they congruent? And we're going to need to make a two-column proof. So I'm going to get mine going again one more time. Statement and reasons. I didn't do this on the last one, but I will say I'm noticing that um, it's not labeled. This triangle is not labeled. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in just some letters real quick to help me when I'm, when I'm doing my two column proof. I could have done that on the other one too, um, but I'm gonna do it for this one just because there's a lot more going on here. Now, look, I noticed that I have this angle over here at A, and I know that it's equal to this angle over here at C. I also know that this side here, we can call that side what, DC? I know that DC is equal to AB. Ooh, I'm, I'm gonna write that into my two column proof right away. I know that DC equals AB because that is given. I also know that that angle up at A, the measure of angle BAC, that is equal to the measure of angle DCA. Whoops, I can't write today. DCA. Again, how do I know? That's given. So we're doing pretty good right now. I got my side. I got my angle. Man, if I just have one more side, I'm good, right? I could do side angle side here. And some of you might be pointing out that, wait a minute, both of these triangles share this side AC. They use AC. They have it in common. Well, I can write then that AC equals CA. That's not given to us. Remember, that's going to be reflexive. Okay, that's going to be reflexive. But now that I've said that, we can say with great certainty now that triangle BAC is congruent to triangle DCA. How do I know? Well, we used side angle side congruency. Awesome. That's it. We know for a fact that they are equal. And this is going to be super helpful for us now because I want to solve for X. Well, I know now that these two triangles are congruent. More importantly, I know that BC and AD, that they are equal. I know that those two sides are equal and they are given these side lengths of 6x plus 6 and 8x plus 2. Since they're congruent triangles, those two sides have to be equal. I'll write it right here. So I know that 6x plus 6 is going to equal 8x plus 2. And that right there is an equation that I can solve very quickly here, right? I'm going to subtract 6, subtract 6. 6x is going to equal 8x uh, minus 4. I'm going to subtract 8x, subtract 8x, right? That's going to leave me with negative 2x equals negative 4. Almost there. To get x by itself, let's divide both sides by negative 2. x equals positive 2. That is our final answer there for b. Let's recap real quick. Two column proof right here. We know that they are congruent by side angle side. Once I know that, I set those two sides equal to each other. I solve for x. Notice that this is not your standard. Oh, prove that these two triangles are congruent, right? This is a step further now. Show me that the triangles are congruent, then 
solve for x. It's adding another element to it because we're at the final now, right? We're at the final point of this year. We got a lot of concepts merging together. It's up to you to figure out how to go through all the stuff that we learned. Alrighty, you did really good. It's That Math Magician, and I'll see you on the next video.